<sighs> I just want to apologize. I'm about to ruin a lot of people's lives today in Master Duel because I'm about to send a lot of people to Shadow Realm with the worst deck in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Without further ado, yeah, let's begin. Yo! What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy Sam from Team Samurai X1 here. Happy Wednesday. First and foremost, I would like to say that there are so many ways to win in Yu-Gi-Oh. Obviously, one, reducing your opponent's life point to zero. Two, Exodia. Three, burning your opponent's life points to zero. Four, you play Drytron. Hero of Ultimateness. <laughs> what if I told you there was a worse way to lose? Huh? <laughs> yes! The worst way to lose, in my opinion, is decking your opponent out. One of the main win conditions in Yu-Gi-Oh! is that if your opponent has no more cards left in their deck, and if they cannot draw during their draw phase, they automatically lose the duel. And why is this the worst? Because unlike Burn, right? When you're playing against Burn, you at least get to draw a six card. You know, if your opponent flips a trap card, you can chain Red Reboot. Like Burn has its weaknesses, but Empty Jar? <laughs> Decking out your opponent has absolutely no weakness. And it's the worst deck in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. I'm about to show you guys the power of this deck right here. One turn win, one turn kill with this disgusting deck in Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel. Before we get started with this video, guys, here is the winner for the $50 gem giveaway. If you are the winner, please screenshot this screen right here with your name on the screen in my face and email me at giveaway at tx1.com. And in today's video, I'm giving away $50 worth of gems once again to one lucky winner who is subscribed to the channel. Subscribe, we're almost at 500,000 subs. You guys are insane. Like the video and turn on the... You better. And three, leave a comment in the comments from below on what other cool gimmicks you guys want to see me do next. Oh, quick plug, if you guys haven't joined the Duonite Patreon, what are you doing? Join the Duonite Patreon today and get exclusive access to all Duonite content. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Without further ado, it's time to ruin a lot of people's day and send them to the Shadow Realm. All right, guys, here we go. Master Duel rank. I'm about to send a lot of people to the Shadow Realm today, guys, and I'm about to ruin a lot of people's lives, and it's not going to be good. This is the worst deck in Master Duel. Here we go, guys. This hand right here is absolutely fire. All right, guys, what we're going to do is very, very simple. Okay, we're going to activate our Reinforce of the Army. Okay, and you guys are able to see why this deck is nasty. We're going to search Photon Thrasher directly from our deck to our hand. And this combo is 100% success rate. You can always combo with any hand that you have. And I'll show you guys a deck in the end of the video. So make sure you guys stay tuned for this. And hopefully, Mr. GG Nori here stay for the entire match. All right, guys, imagine he just scoops. This is going to be insane, okay? This deck is an FTK base deck and you guys will see why this ftk is so insane okay we're gonna activate our shade burgundy right here and our goal right now is trying to get out granite granite and you guys are probably wondering sam what is the goal behind this deck the whole goal behind this deck is to summon granite granite okay and it's very simple to summon him all you need is two level four monsters and once you have access to two level four monsters you can xc summon into him and he's absolutely insane for this deck okay so summon granite okay and what his card does is very very simple and this is what triggers off the FTK first turn kill or the first turn win okay we're gonna activate granite granite's effect we're gonna attach a material to add a rock monster from our deck to our hand okay attach Thrasher. what is the rock monster we're adding we're adding morphing jar we're about to ruin this guy's life right here and I'm sorry in advance for those of you who are watching this but this is the dirtiest deck in Yu-Gi-Oh's history and you guys are about to see why so what we do now is that we have a normal summon yet right so we're gonna set the morphing jar okay we got Two monsters that we summon on the field to get access to Granite Granite. Granite searches our Morphing Jar. Now we can set Morphing Jar. With cards like Book of Taiyu in our deck, we're able to flip Morphing Jar. So that way that we send your opponent's entire hand to the graveyard and they'll draw new cards, right? Which is insane. So what we're going to do now is that we are just going to set the Monster Reborn. Okay? And we're going to use Book of Taiyu. Book of Taiyu is going to immediately flip up the Morphing Jar. So now we're going to flip up the Morphing Jar. And now we're going to see what deck he's playing, okay? Morphing Jar will activate its effect. We're going to mill his entire hand to Dark Magicians. Wow. We milled his entire hand to the graveyard. Okay, let's see what, what's in his grave. He's playing Dark Magicians. Wow. Okay. We're about to send Yugi to the Shadow Realm. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to try to keep utilizing Morphing Jar's ability. And you guys are probably wondering, how are you decking out your opponent on the very first turn? Well, I'm going to show you. Okay? We have a bunch of extenders in our deck. We got Hat Tricker in our deck. We got Trick Clown. We got Damage Juggler. A bunch of crazy cards that help triggers off our effects. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to activate our Book of Moon, okay? Book of Moon is very simple, okay? We are going to flip Morphing Jar face down, okay? Morphing Jar is now face down, cool? So our deck is all extenders, right? So now what we're going to do is that we get to special summon our Nefarious Archfiend, special summon attack position. It doesn't matter what happens, okay? Now we're going to overlay these two. We're going to XC summon. 
We're going to perform a bunch of XC summons this turn. We're going to make Photon Propeller Operative right here, right now, okay? This card is absolutely insane. The reason why Propeller Operative is very important is because it's card that's able to flip Morphing Jar face up. So now we're going to activate our Propeller Operative's effect. We're going to target the Morphing Jar right here that's on the field. And we're going to flip it face up. And Morphing Jar is not a once per turn effect. So we, we can keep abusing this card's ability like no tomorrow. Look, we flip Morphing Jar. Now we activate Jar's effect. And we can also chain Book of Moon to the Jar's effect. So if he has Effect Veiler or anything like that, we can also block the Veiler or Impermanence with the Book of Moon that we have in our hand in this current situation right here. So we're going to flip Morphing Jar here. Okay, cool. Face down. And we also get us in Zephyros to the graveyard too, which is insane. So we flip it face down, we get a new hand right here, okay? So our opponent keeps milling their hand, we keep adding cards to our hand, which is ridiculous. So we're drawing cards like Taiyu, another Book of Moon, Pot of Avarice. Remember, whatever he draws, I draw as well. So if I can't draw cards in my deck, I automatically lose a duel. But with cards like Pot of Avarice that's in my deck, I am ensured that I can never deck out. So look, he has 25 cards. I have 23 with Avarice. It ensures that I cannot deck out with my own combo right here, okay? So now we're gonna do next, we're gonna set all our Avarices, okay? Because Morphing Jar doesn't matter if you have any cards in our hand or not, we're still gonna be able to trigger off Morphing Jar's ability. If you have zero cards, we can still draw. If you have 10 cards, we're still drawing cards. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing with a Book of Taiyu. And hopefully, Mr. GG No Re right here does not scoop. We're gonna use Book of Taiyu to flip Morphing Jar face up. Look at this combo, guys. Morphing Jar now triggers off its ability. Okay, now we're going to chain Book of Moon once again. We're going to activate Book of Moon in response to Morphing Jar's effect. Okay, cool. Flip it face down. Amazing, amazing. So we're going to discard our entire hand. Here we go. Book of Moon will trigger. Discard our entire hand. And we're going to keep drawing cards. <laughs> Whoa, this is where it gets so sick. Look at that. He has 20 cards left in deck. I have 18 cards left in deck, okay? What is in his graveyard right here? Dark Magician. He's playing Kaiju. So there's definitely going second cards in his deck 100,000%. No hand traps at the moment, right? So... We're pretty much safe in the clear for us to actually go off. So now we're gonna do is that we're gonna, it's, it's very simple. We're actually gonna activate our, we have Zephyros that's in our graveyard, right? So what we can do now is that we can actually activate Kern Grazer right here, just to activate it. So we can get a free summon with Zephyros. So we're gonna activate Zephyros ability, okay? We're gonna actually bounce back Kern Grazer that's in our hand, to our hand, to summon Zephyros on our side of the field. Okay, cool. This combo is very, very basic, okay guys? Really easy to learn, really easy to understand. And now what we're going to do is that we're actually going to activate Magical Stone Excavation. And we're going to discard two cards. We can discard these two cards. Okay, it doesn't matter what we discard. Any card, all these monsters in our hand is completely useless. Sending our monsters to the graveyard is very great because we get to recycle those monsters back for Potter Average to ensure that we can never deck out. So now what we're going to do is that since we already have Book of Taiyu that's in our hand, what we can do is very, very simple. We can actually add Book of Moon to our hand, okay, with Magical Stone. So once we flip it face up, we can just chain Book of Moon once again to flip it back face down, right? So now what we're going to do is very, very simple. We can actually activate Book of Taiyu right here. We have 18 cards. He has 20 cards left in our deck. Uh, he has 20 cards left in his deck. We're going to flip the Morphing Jar. Oh my God. This is why it's the worst deck in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because your opponent will not get to play at all. Okay? They will not get to play. Uh, Morphing Jar activates effect. Yes, we're going to chain Book of Moon. Look at that, guys. We're literally utilizing Morphing Jar to our advantage in every way, shape, or form. And it's unfair. Literally unfair because we're drawing five cards. Look, we have one card to discard. Literally, look. Look at this. Look at this. Do, do you see how do you see how ridiculous this is? And you guys are following Sam. And also in the graveyard, I have 80 changer. 80 changers can flip morphing jar face up. But now what we can do is that we can actually use these two cards right here. Okay, we're gonna combo off now. We're gonna go into cross sheep right here. And cross sheep is insane because we drew instant fusion. You guys are about to see why cross sheep is ridiculous. All right, guys, time is running out. We need to continue our combos. I'm sorry for talking too much. Cross Sheep. And I'm so happy Mr. GG No Re is not quitting right here because now we got to activate Instant Fusion. Instant Fusion is great because we get to, spend, we, we get to summon Ragin. And Ragin is one of those cards that helps flip our, you know, Morphing Jar back face down, which is ridiculous, right? Summon Ragin. Cross Sheep will now trigger off its ability to special on a monster back from our graveyard. Cross Sheep is going to be able to trigger its effect to special on any level 4 from our grave. It doesn't really matter what we special them in, so summon a level 4 monster. Okay, so now we're going to go Propeller Operative once again. Okay, cool. Summon Operative. Awesome, and now we get to trigger off uh, Morphing Charts effect again, right? So we need to hurry up before our time runs out. So, Operative right here. Now we get a special summon, of course, Hat Trigger. Just 
Special summon as many level four on the field as possible. Uh, special summon Inari Fire as well, because we control obviously a spellcaster monster. And now what we can do is that we can actually activate full operative. Oh my god, guys, here we go. Uh, detach material from this card. Uh, flip morphing jar face up. Okay, cool. Flip it up, activate jar's effect, mill everything to the graveyard. Okay. And now he has 10 cards left in deck, guys. Okay, we have eight cards left in deck, but do not worry. Do not worry. Okay, we can activate, of course, our Morphing Jar's effect. We can flip this card face down. Okay, now what we can do is very simple. We can activate our Pot of Adverse's effect. Shovel back five cards into the deck. So we ensure that we don't deck out before our opponent. Shovel back five cards into the deck. Here we go. Oh my god, here we go, guys. We're going to draw two cards. Doesn't matter what we drew. Uh, now what we're going to do is that we can activate... We can actually activate Pot of Adverse once again. We'll recycle all those back right here. Recycle everything back. Oh my god, 69, 68 seconds. Okay, draw two cards right here. And now we're gonna do next is that we are going to activate Magical Stone of Excavation. We're gonna basically discard our this, this. We're gonna add Pot of Adverse back to our hand. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, now what we're gonna do is very, very simple. Set the Adverse. We're gonna use, we're gonna use our AD Changer. Oh my god, guys. 49 seconds! 49! 80 changer effect. Flip Morphing Jar face up. Oh my god, guys. Maybe I'm gonna lose to my own card. Activate Morphing Jar. Discard my entire hand. Let's go! Let's go! Draw five. We have seven cards left in deck. He has five cards left in deck. We are gonna go into XC Summon. Into right here. Right now. Into this dude right here. Uh, Power Ranger. Power Ranger. We're gonna summon Power Ranger, guy. Okay, cool. Summon Power Ranger, dude. Okay, cool. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to use Power Ranger, dude. Okay, Power Ranger, dude. Come on. Power Ranger, dude. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Boom. Uh, we're going to flip Morphing Dark Face down. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. All right, guys. Now, here we go. Here we go. 30 seconds left on time. Oh, my God. 29. 28. Okay, boom. Yes. Boom. Boom. Oh, my God. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. We're going to make Borgard Dragon. Borgard. Come on, Borgard. Don't fail me now, Borgard. Boom. Borgard. And now we're going to activate Borgard's effect. We're going to flip Morphing Jar. This is why this deck is the, the worst deck in Master Who's history. We're going to flip it turn face up. Oh my god. Morphing Jar trigger. Discard my entire hand. Draw. Oh my god, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. He has no cards left in deck. What can we do? We're just going to end our turn. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Our opponent ran out of cards in their deck and could not draw. I almost lost to myself. All right, guys. So if you want to ruin a lot of people's days in Master Duel Ranked, this is 100% the deck for you. All right, guys. So this deck right here is simply called Empty Jar, or as I like to call it, Jar GG. Because you know why? Because every hand gives you a GG hand. This deck right here is super duper simple. It is 100% different from your traditional Empty Jar. Empty Jar, traditionally, you play three Morphing Jars, Obviously, AD changers and things like that. But with the Master Duel Forbidden and Limited list, we don't have access to three Morphing Jars. So we can't rely on just drawing Morphing Jar in our first opening hand. But what we can rely on is having level 4 extenders in our opening hand to help us get access into Morphing Jar. And with Granite Granite right here, it makes this FTK possible. Because having this card in your extra deck ensures that you don't need to open up with Morphing Jar to actually win. Right? Because Morphing Jar is searchable. Not only is Morphing Jar searchable off Granite Granite, but if you open up with cards like Spirit of the Fall Wind, you can also add Morphing Jar directly from your deck to your hand because she reads that when this card is normal summon, you can add one flip monster directly from your deck to your hand. So in this case, you can search Morphing Jar off her or search Morphing Jar off Granite Granite, or you can hard draw the Morphing Jar. But that's very unlikely. This deck cannot play Pod Duality because as you guys seen, we special summon a lot of monsters. And if our opponent were to maxi us, it makes it even better because they're drawing more cards. Drawing more cards means that they're emptying out their deck. Hence the reason why this deck is called Empty Jar. So this deck right here utilizes Morphing Jar in a way that you keep flipping it, drawing more of your combo cards at the same time, sending your opponent's entire deck to the graveyard. We got, of course, two AD changers. This card's a warrior. And it also has amazing graveyard ability to actually change the positioning of Morphing Jar. Morphing Jar, obviously, the main card of our deck. Zephyros, Thrasher, Inari, Dinotherium. Rat looking dude, Gigabyte, Hat Trigger, Damage, Damage Juggler, Triple Copies of Hat Trigger, and of course, Trick Clown, absolutely mandatory. All these cards right here 
that you guys seen right now they're all extenders which is ridiculous as you guys saw i was able to extend every single time using their ability to special himself out from the hand which is really good triple spirit of the fall wind this card searches morphing jar directly from your extra hand so her and an extender gets you access to morphing jar and once you do that you can actually use gallant granite's ability not only does it search morphing jar but if you already have morphing jar in your hand you can use gallant granite to actually special summon morphing jar in face down defense so that way that you can use cards like book of taiyu to flip morphing jar face up so you can trigger off your win condition right because usually after you flip your first morphing jars ability you're more likely just already going to win the duel curtain razor free summon of course nemesis corridor once you banish the damage juggler you can just basically recycle it back to the deck to special this card from your hand of course this card right here zs arm sage basically is level 4 extender for the deck card destruction reborn foolish burial Rota, triple copies of Book of Taiyu to so flip your Morphing Jar face up. Two copies of Magic Ghost Stone of Excavation. What it does is that you can just discard two cards to recycle any spell card from a great retro hand. So you can reuse cards of Taiyu and also Book of Moon, which is great. Two copies of Avarice. It ensures that you never deck out. That's what you got to be careful with when it comes to piling this deck is that if you're not mindful of how you use Morphing Jar, Morphing Jar can actually kill you, right? So Avarice is nice. Institution is good. Mud Dragon and of course Ragen. Ragen has utility purposes to just flip itself face down. Or flip morphing jar face down obviously and then of course mud dragon right here which is very important it's a level four monster which instant fusion serves as an additional extender for the entire deck one for one gets you access to of course mr ad uh three copies of book of moon to flip morphing jar face down triple copies a book of eclipse to flip morphing jar face down once again and of course the best extender in the deck for sure is shade burgundy and this card is just so so good so yeah guys the only thing i'll probably change is probably cut this down to maybe two or maybe even one and then just playing upstar goblin but if you guys have any way for me to actually make this deck a little more consistent, let me know in the comments from below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Extra deck, Mud Dragon, Ragin, Zen Meister. It flips the monster's face down. Capilla Operative flips the monster face up. Exxon Knight is a really good board clearance. This card flips the monster's face down as well. Grand Knight surges everything. Anima, Barricade Board Blocker. There are hands where I can make Barricade Board Blocker to pitch the ED Changer. So that way that I can trigger out Morphing Jar's ability. Cross Chief is a really good extender with Instant Fusion. Borogard Dragon, I've never thought I would use this card ever in my life, but the fact that this card is just so awesome. The Flip Morphing Jar face up is just so, so good. It's one of the greatest utility cards in the deck. Appalooza, you can make it really good as Stop Hand Trap and Access Code if you need it for OTK. So this deck can actually just extend itself. You can easily OTK while going second as well. Uh, by going first, you just empty jar your opponent's entire deck and you just win the entire duel. So this deck is insane and it's a new way to play morphing jar all right guys thank you guys so much for watching today's video if you guys enjoyed this video smash the thumbs up button it'll be absolutely amazing i just ruined somebody's day on master duel and kudos to the gg no re guy our opponent didn't quit oh my goodness guys that ftk first turn win was insanity guys if you guys haven't entered a giveaway yet make sure you guys enter the giveaway super duper simple subscribe to the channel and make sure you guys leave in the comments below on what cool gimmicks you guys want to see next when it comes to master duel thank you guys so much for watching this is your boy sam from team star sam signing out all right guys peace